tech rabbit here. So what have we here today? Um, this is actually a very interesting part of computer history. Uh, it's a um, Commodore Amiga 500 computer and um, uh, actually broken. It presumably has something wrong with the keyboard and I got it um, with a relatively good price um, and then of course because it was a good price there's no accessories so but uh, we actually have the unit um, the Amiga 500 is also known by an abbreviation called A500 back in the day and it um, contains a Pro Motorola 68000 CPU which was very very common in those days for um, computers for home use and um, they also the concept was that in this this here package you actually had everything you need to run a computer so it um, it contains the CPU uh, and um, graphics and um, sound coprocessors so the, this this also this architecture design is that there's not only one processor there's actually several and uh, if we take uh, the United Kingdom as a reference they um, so they released it in October 1987 so that's quite a while ago it's not an insignificant product in the in from the perspective that um, ah, it depends on what sources you use, but the, I would say they they made about they sold about four to five million of these units, and that's um, covering the whole world, so all of Europe, North America. And stuff. Um, however, you know the Commodore um, and its product line came to an end. So this this uh, 500 series was discontinued in 1992. So that was the last year of manufacturing for this this concept. Um, it has a flop mainly for the media. It has a floppy disk drive, and that's an 880 kilobit floppy disk drive. Uh, Supported by this drive, it, it does double-sided discs uh, with a capacity of 901,120 uh, bytes. <laughs> but this, the interesting thing is that this can also handle um, IBM. In those days, IBM the PC was coming on the market, so that you, you could actually handle 360 and 720 kilobyte disc formats on, with this unit. So anyway, so the base unit, um, it houses the keyboard, which is very strange for modern day computing. And um, the CPU has set it inside, graphics and sound, it's all, well yeah, just think of it, all, all in um, this shell, everything in, it, in a very compact kind of format. Uh, memory is interesting because you can have like uh, 512 to 1024 kilobytes of memory and that's a, at speeds of 150 nanoseconds so <laughs> compared to modern implementations so <laughs> yeah we're, we're talking kilobytes here not not you know no not megabytes not gigabytes not terabytes <laughs> Anyway, so uh, if we just take a brief tour of the connectors, let's see, I'm going to try and do it from the wrong, wrong side. So the has two um, connectors here, and they are for um, either a mouse or a joystick. So this this could handle the Atari uh, joysticks from that day, from that period, which were Atari compatible, so that you could plug them in here. So either a mouse or and then you have um, sound, right and left, so stereo sound. And then you had a disk drive port. So you could actually plug in, you could plug in like an extra floppy disk drive. Uh, 
and then it actually has a 25 pin serial port a full full capable serial port which is actually missing it you know you don't find that in one and then it had an oddity called a parallel port so this was very common back in the day where you could connect in a printer or something and use the parallel port idea so that's eight eight data bits in parallels so um people use this this as a method to also do I uh, digital io through this port uh, and it's got the power connector, that's Commodore Custom, and then it had a very odd um, video output port, so this is Commodore Custom, so I need a custom cable, and then this was the, um, uh, just a video feed, mono video out, no HDMI or display port in the day. And then also one notable factor is for internationalization that this 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 unit has the uh, UK keyboard, so these were hard coded with either you know, yeah, depending on what country or region you buy it from, then it will be uh, various keyboard uh, configurations. But if you're in the US, then you'll recognize this because it's the same the same keyboard layout used in the US as was in the UK. Um, so. So, what can you do with this um, computer in terms of upgrading it? Well, actually, it was a surprising amount of upgrades you could you could um, put on this thing. Uh, you could, you know, in this behind this door, you could put in a memory expansion module. You could actually upgrade the CPU, and there are several accelerator options available. So if you're a little bit handy, handy in your hands, then it's actually not difficult to add. You could, you could go for a six, uh, six, eight thousand, ten, twenty, thirty, or even forty. But I haven't found the actual accelerator that uses forty. I've come up to thirty. I found implementations up to six, eight thousand, thirty, but not um, six thousand. But it was, it was in. In some sources, it was written that there is a 6,000, 68,040 CPU com, uh, expander also. And it's directly upgradable in the box um, with, you know, there's, there's kind of a CPU adapter and extra card stuff. Uh, or there was an implementation where uh, you open this side panel here and then there's a connector and you can actually plug in, a, in an adapter of those, those I've seen very few of um, oh, yeah not really something that seems to be generally available nowadays uh, let's see now this is the uh, and the reason I purchased this this is one of the um, uh, well not Arguably, probably not one of the first units of the manufacturing, but this is an early UK version of an A500. So this is a very classical A500, and um, this has a uh, a chipset inside. And um, for the, the one can't really believe in do the modern computing, but that was it's upgradable. <laughs> you can actually take the chips out, and you can put in the um, enhanced uh, chipset version of the Amiga series and then you can actually upgrade this to an Amiga 500 plus or Amiga A2000 uh, you know to the next level of Amiga so um, they were just plug it in and um, this specific unit and they talk about okay what power um, led do you have this is the red power um, power light version so uh, there's a little bit different configurations of this so as I said harking back to this the original and it's based on the it has an internal um, ROM set which is the internal lower level of the operating system and then you you boot it up with a workbench diskette um, so the whole operating system is um, par partially chips inside and then the second part is the disk 
and this uses the Kickstart 1.2. Uh, and then uh, for those that are a little bit older than, um, this was manufactured in West Germany. Let's be very specific, West Germany, because they actually used to exist in East Germany. <laughs> Uh, the motherboard, according to the specs, it's a Revision 5 motherboard. And the floppy disk drive is the um, Shunon F345E. Uh, Sometimes important because some of them were, you know, they came with different floppy disk drives and, and, and they had a little bit different um, you know, functional stability and stuff. So, so it should, should be a quite a good one. Um, this one is. Um, suffering from a bit of yellowing and um, they, basically that's what happens to this type of plastic over time that if it's exposed to direct sunlight to ultraviolet light then it will start degrading and, and you'll get this yellowing effect but it doesn't of course it doesn't disturb the functionality it doesn't it does not in itself destroy the, the plastic in any meaningful way from a mechanical perspective it just makes it not look so great also a reason why I got it for such a good deal. Um, it's been generally cleaned in the pictures from the purchaser. This was ta this was disassembled and, and, and basically it looked uh, there was a basic cleanup done. So, but um, I think I'm going to probably do my own cleanup um, in a later video if you'd like to join in. Uh, uh, now, according to the advertisement, um, as I said, it, it has some issues with some of the keys not working, but otherwise it should be in functional condition. This, this um, screenshots of it you know, may be working, you know, depending on how much you rely on the information. Uh, And um, when I was talking about accessories to actually run it, um, when you have the original box, then you have a, a power supply, a mouse, usually an RF converter, because those days they were very much into analog TVs. So you had an RF converter to convert the RGB signal to a TV's TV channel signal. Uh, yeah, and then there would be... Uh, yeah, some cables also, depending on which country or region also. But I did get it with some discs that are copies of the originals, well, copy copies. Uh, so I, I haven't um, run it or because I haven't got any of the accessories. So I do have a Kickstart disc and a test kit, and which has this info program included. Yeah, this info, you recognize that that's existed forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as info that's a continue now, so you can download it for a PC. Um, yep. Yes, oh, no, very important detail from a, a heritage perspective, or if you want, uh, that, that you could define this as a complete unit, because um, uh, maybe not so often, but the, the, uh, many of the Amiga 500s that are sold, they don't have um, this cover. And even more likely that this cover here is missing. And that, and that of course, doesn't make it a little bit less complete. So I also bought this from this perspective. It's a you know, feature complete. There isn't so. I mean, of course, it doesn't really disturb the functionality of the unit, but I, I thought it was important to get it as a uh, that the case is actually complete. Um, some odd reason, all the um, rubber feet are missing. That's usually not common. I mean, sometimes you, you have maybe some of them missing. But in this case, it looks looks, like it's, looks very clean also. So it's, it looks like somebody removed them and, and cleaned it out to make sure that they're gone. But I will um, be um, replacing those. And um, to actually run this, then of course we need the accessories, so, so that's the power supply, absolutely required. Um, a mouse, because it actually has a graphical user interface, we'll be looking at that later. Uh, it needs a monitor, and you can't use any standard HDMI monitor, that won't work. 
Uh, not even a DVI input will work with this because of the custom connector. So we need a monitor. We need a special RGB cable to SCART or something else. And um, if you want to play uh, many of the games, not all of them, but some of them are, I wouldn't say meant to be, oh yeah, well, let's say put it this way, you can do it from the keyboard, but they're meant to use a, um, a joystick. So we also need to, um, yeah, find if we can invest in, in getting that as an accessory. So anyway, what do I intend to do with this? And um, well, I intend to, um, yeah, restore it to as good a functional order as possible, and then um, do some demonstrations of its usage in various scenarios. Um, the actual, my actual history is that when I was very young, I trained myself to be an electronics service person. And I actually worked for a, co a Commodore company in the country that I was residing in. And um, it was just at the beginning when, um, when uh, the, the Commodore 64 existed and was the predominant home computer. And then the um, Amiga 1000, Amiga 500 came on the market, and um, then also uh, Commodore went for um, uh, IBM compatible PCs. And um, yeah, very interesting uh, from a perspective that I could choose between uh, an Amiga setup or I could buy the. Um, uh, IBM compatible computer, and even if the IBM compatible computer in those days it was a, it was a like you know hardly any sound uh, black and white um, MS DOS you know the really ancient version of XT. I actually chose the PC uh, and spent my money on that instead, and that was mainly because I was uh, I already saw the trend that. Um, PC compatibility, you know, PCs were going to take over the world, so I actually opted for <laughs> for this for the, for the crappy PC. I mean, th this could do so much more uh, in those days um, compared to what the PC could do when the PC first launched out with the PC compatibles. But it was actually, um, yeah. But I decided that you know the the this here is not a sustainable um, business, and it turned out that I was right because. Um, X years later, um, I think they managed to keep this going on for yeah, for 12 years in total, and then the, they stopped making the, all of these, and then, the, and then uh, Commodore actually wrecked itself. Part. Uh, the market and Commodore basically, yeah, pretty complicated story, but they basically wrecked themselves and disappeared from the market. But anyway, that's um. My plan, so this is my very first um, personally owned Amiga 500. I actually w had the option to borrow Amiga computers from work, so I basically didn't use those until I, I actually moved on. Um, I actually quit the business to go back to education prior to Commodore crash diving. So basically I, I was saved from that. I, I already. Yeah, as I said, when I went, I went back for higher education and um, continued my life. And Commodore, Commodore knows dive and die. <laughs> hey, but anyway, if you're interested in seeing me um, getting this, um, yeah, I don't know how much restoration is required, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll go through it thoroughly and, and see what we can do. So uh, I'll be making some more videos about handling, and then of course some um, final setup, test runs, and. Maybe we could do some gaming. So anyway, if you found this interesting and you want to support this initiative, consider buying me a cup of coffee or you know, buy some merch. And um, I'll see you in the next one.